It's the Shinigami and Stern Redder Battle Royale! Mayori Kurotsuchi versus Gasel Guell. Winner, Mayori. Byakuya Yakuchki versus three Stern Ridders. Winner, Byakuya. In a really kind of lame off-screen way. Byakuya Yakuchki versus Pepe Wakabrata. Winner, um, okay, I think we actually all kind of won in that situation there. And now, Ruki Akuchki and Renji Abarai versus Bazby. Oh, get ready now, because this is going to be intense. I've had like four battles up till now, and I've curb stomped every one of them. This is going to be the most epic battle this entire arc. <laughs> he doesn't even know how funny that is yet. <laughs> oh, God, I'm bleeding. Hey everybody, Techie 101 here, and yes, I did wait till Halloween to film this video, just because I love the holidays so much. But anyway, here we go with Bleach chapter number 603 review, entitled, What the Hell? Really? That's the actual title of the- Come on, Kubo, you're making it too- that, you got it mixed up, buddy. That's what my reaction is supposed to be to the chapter title. I mean, you didn't even add the question mark on the end of it. I mean, like, oh, okay, no, better yet. Maybe it's not my reaction to it. Maybe it's, like, Kubo's reaction to the chapter as he finishes writing it. Hmm, all right, and that's the end of chapter 603. Now, uh, hold on, I might add a little bit more detail to the background here. And, oh, wait a second, I'm Taito Kubo. I don't draw backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. What the hell did I just draw? What are you doing? Huh, it's me, man, rad teching. I'm, I'm going as Taito Kubo this year. You know what? It's... It's actually pretty good. It works on you. Good job, buddy. Good job. Oh, God. Okay, this is going to be one of those things, right? Like a running gag where all my different personas show up throughout the review in Halloween costumes. Okay, you know what? Visionary powers, bitch. I'm getting this out of the way now. So without further ado, I introduce you to Dinosaur Teching, Corporal Teching, and my personal favorite, Princess Teching, for all you fan fiction writers out there. Okay, we good? We got it all out of the way? All right, let's get to it. Yeah, now, Maga, get back to that review! Yes, sir! Alright, so chapter starts off with Yuha Bach having his epic standoff with Nimaya Otso, the god of the sword. And despite the fact that Otso was kind of going on a mass killing spree in the past two chapters, this time he decides to, okay, I think I'm just gonna chill out a little bit and see what he's doing. Because he even brings up that they have no idea what abilities he displayed, except from the stuff that he did a thousand years ago, which we're still really vague on, and the battle with uh, Genyu's side that we saw, but that was his double. So they have absolutely no idea what he could do more than the Shinigami thought they could, he could do. So uh, he's just like standing his ground, he's just like, okay, I can't just charge at him all willy-nilly. I guess I'll go for an arm first. Yeah, that's the best way for me to get started, which, you know, in terms of, like, tactical battle strategy for an opponent that could literally do anything and commands an entire army, you know, like, okay, imagine you're playing an RPG, and, you know, you fight through a fucking legion and after legion of uh, enemy monsters and dragons and shit, and you get to the final boss fight, and you know you're gonna die a bunch of times on the boss. You just know you are. You have no idea what he's going to do. Is your first thought to just think, all right, I better not charge indirectly. I think I'll go for an arm. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a better strategy. Now, my strategy is to hang the fuck back and watch him for a couple, you know, minutes until you figure it out, but maybe that's not an option here, so whatever. Nehemiah strikes a battle pose and he's ready to fight, as a bright light then emits directly from the tree cage. We get the title of the chapter and then we cut back 
down to the Seirete. Whoa, Kubo! Oh, you little bastard. I love you so much. Okay. Oh, whatever. Anyway, no. It, this chapter, really, it serves as sort of like a roundup for like the remaining Stern Riders and the Shinigami that are fighting them back on the ground. You know, because we were with the Soul Palace for the last couple of chapters. This serves as more of a roundup than anything. So I'm not really too pissed off about it. Anyway, though, we get a trail of blood leading into like uh, some debris, like a fallen like building or something. And there we see Gazelle Guel chomping down on Bambietta. And no, not in a sexual way. Although, actually, okay, look, everything that happens with Cassell could be interpreted in a sexual way, so maybe it is, I don't know. No, but what really happening here, I guess, is after she was stabbed by Mayori's, you know, zombie squad, which, by the way, we have no idea what happens with Byakia or Mayori or Kensei or Rose or, you know, or any of the other zombies in this chapter, but it, it kind of confirms that Mayori didn't really do anything to really put Cassell down. I mean, I guess, you know, I, I kind of assume that when zombie Kensei stabbed her, maybe he was injecting the same kind of serum into Cassell, which, you know, made her, like, fuck with her equilibrium and fall down and maybe Mayuri dragged her back to his like a weird sex dungeon or whatever laboratory sorry but no here we just see that you know Gazelle is lacking blood when she got stabbed and now she's just crawling around you know and sucking down on Bambietta to get her blood back so Mayuri really didn't do anything to you know coup de gras the zombie girl maybe he was just interested in what she was going to do next but we don't even see him so I don't know what the hell this is Anyway, Bambi has a little bit of an objection to the fact that Gazelle's kind of draining her of all of her bodily fluids and says, Hey, hey, go easy. I don't want to die just yet. To which this responds with Gazelle grabbing her and pounding her fucking face into the pavement, stating that you're already dead. You're already dead. How many times do I have to tell you? Because don't you understand? Give me my blood back. You know, despite the fact that she has sociopathic tendencies and she's probably most likely a trap, She's still a little cute. I don't know. I'll be the first one to say it. I don't give a damn. Although I will kind of shift gears here. I, I need to address something kind of serious with you that Cassell just reminded me. Are you guys aware that over 200 zombie deaths occur by head injury in this country alone every single year? Please, donate to Zombie Kind. They're losing numbers and we really need to strengthen them up, okay? Do you love the world we live in? Of course you don't. You want it to burn and we can't have it burn without the fucking zombies. So quit killing them, donate to them so they can get their brains and the world can be wiped clean. Anyway, though, after Gazelle's done having her little head smashy fit, she then embraces Bambi's lifeless corpse, or I guess more lifeless than it already was, saying that, Oh my god, I just love you to freaking bits, Bambi. You're just so adorable. This is all interrupted when Loloto Sternrider G finally finds them and states that Gazelle is alive to her expectations. We then get a little glimpse of Gazelle's volt standing, which, okay, maybe that might explain how she was able to survive, you know, Mayori's attack, or I mean, Zombie Kensei's attack led by Mayori. I thought for a brief period, maybe Mayori did inject the serum into her, and then she used volt standing to counter it, because we didn't really see it being used on any Quincy's directly. I mean, it was used on, like, Zombie Toshiro and everybody, but, you know, they, they're not Quincy's. They can't use volt standing, but I think it's just an idea that he didn't use it on Gazelle and whatever. Maybe just an idea for Kubo to finally show off Gazelle's volt standing because it's the only one of the Stern Rider clique we didn't get to see yet. And it's pretty cool. It's like Wyvern, like a zombie Wyvern wings or something. It's pretty awesome. It's like bony. And with this being said, Loloto does kind of like the roundup I stated in this chapter. She goes down a list basically explaining the fates of what all the Stern Ridders. Gazelle's questioning, okay, what happened to Candace? What happened to Pepe? What happened to Meninas? And Loloto states that, oh, I straight up just devour Pepe. He was freaking disgusting, but he's dead. I had to fight against Meninas because she got manipulated by Pepe, and it was a tough battle, but I managed to beat her down. I don't think she's dead yet. Candace got defeated by the enemy, but it was Biaki we're talking about here, and at the same time, from what we'll see later in this chapter, it's probably most likely she's still alive for the moment, but then she didn't get beaten by Ichigo prior, so Candace might be dead. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, though, she's about to continue her conversation when all of a sudden she gets a gun pointed directly at her head. Mind explaining yourself, Akutron? Akutron? Who the fuck is Akutron? Oh, oh my god. Oh. Holy shit. Is this the day? Is is this the chapter? Is this the legitimate chapter where we get Star Ritter and Rupert Akashan? Whoa! He finally got a fucking name! He finally got a mother fucking name! Yes! Woo! Go, 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 Kubo! I don't even care. I don't care. He got her name. Name itself, okay, Robert Akatron. I mean, the first thing I thought when I read that was that he's gonna be like a weatherman for Channel 6 or whatever, but, you know... I you know, screw it, I have a skit. Go ahead, do it, do the skit. I need to celebrate for a while. You're watching WNN, the one and day news network, with your starring anchor, Sternritter A, Uryu Ishida, your co-anchor, Sternritter E, Bambietta Basterbine, Sternritter S, Maste Masculine with sports, and for weather, we have Sternritter N, Robert Akutron. 
All right, so as you can see here, it is currently partly cloudy over the northeastern section of the Vonnente. High of 62, uh, but be aware that we also have a cold front moving down from the Rukongai District Number 6. So take out those jackets and get ready because winter is on its way. And Oh, oh, I just uh, was informed that now we have an Ashwall and Holy Selection alert for the entirety of the Western Serete. So uh, if you're a Quincy, be prepared to die in a horrible burning passion from the light that will slay our enemies for all eternity, but will also kill us because our magic is kind of a dickhead. Woo, yeah, okay. So, <clears throat> oh, okay, Sternritter and Robert Akutron, we got a full board, baby. Oh yeah, all Sternritters are known, <sighs> except for this guy. Okay, first off, it's kind of a, kind of weird that Kubo didn't throw in what Robert Akutron's Stern, I mean, C Colonel Sanders, Quincy, whatever, I don't, you could call him whatever, uh, you know, what his power is, considering, you know, what we're going to see later on this chapter, you could just throw it in there, I mean, unless he really didn't come up for anything for the end, but, you know, this is the last time I'm going to address Shaz Domin, okay, last time. I've come up with four possibilities here on what the hell the deal is with Shaz. First possibility is that he shared a letter with somebody else, no idea who that would have been. Second option, Ichigo killed him, and then his power was passed on to another Sternritter that we have seen after his death. Third possibility, Kubo maybe legitimately forgot about him. We don't like to think that Mangakas do that kind of shit, but in this situation, it might be possible. And fourth possibility, and I don't like to think this, that Shaz is not part of the traditional English alphabet. He's punctuation, or he's some other variation of a letter. Once again, I don't like to think Kubo would go that route with it. I find it much more likely that he either just completely forgot about Shaz, or that Shaz shares a letter with somebody else, okay? That's my idea. Anyway, though, we have Robert Akutron now staring down Loloto very quizzically why he would do this, but hey, at least he survived a Biakia beatdown. Not everyone can walk away from that at the end of the day. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is all going down south, man. It wasn't supposed to do it like this, bro. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Uh, okay. Uh, what's going on there, Robbie? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Okay. His Majesty, His Majesty left to the Royal Palace without us, didn't he? Uh, okay. I'm more concerned about the fact you have your 9mm pointed at my temple, but yeah, I think he did. Oh man, okay, we are fucked. We are totally fucked with a capital F. I thought Asnot was dead. Yeah, he is, and we're gonna be joining him in about five minutes. So, big revelation of the chapter that's laid on by Robert Akutron is in fact that His Majesty did not take them to the Soul Palace for a reason, and that's because he deemed them unworthy of the fights that are going to continue. Remember back when Askenak Levar was, you know, staring up at the tower and he was just like, I wonder if I'll get chosen or not. Maybe that's the deal. Like, Yuha had his elite guard with him already, like Harold Valkyrie and, L and Lily Barrow, but he was going to choose some of the uh, regular Sternwriters to be promoted, and the only one he selected was Asken. That would explain when Asken popped out under his hoodie in chapter 599 he's like oh wow i'm the only one he picked really maybe he was saying that kind of like he expected like somebody else to show up like basby or something but no he was the only stern Ritter that uh you hot shows as worthy enough to go and you know invade the soul palace everyone else is essentially just fuel for his his power which was we're gonna soon see robbie brings up the fact that none of the other stern Ritters, including Loloto and gazelle were around in the organization as long as he has so he's married one of the older members there and he states that he has no they have no idea how terrifying you really is because they didn't bring them down, they're only going to be prey for His Majesty's Ash Wallen. Oh, okay, so basically, at the end of the day, what Robbie Akutron's trying to get around here is that Yuha basically just wants to... Destroy us all! 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 Oh my god, that is simultaneously awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love skeletons. Anytime there's a skeleton in Bleach, you know, it's instantly awesome. Like when Yama took out his freaking, uh, you know, Bonkai and he summoned all the army, or when he completely nuked Driscoll and his, like, his skeleton began to, like, burn off his flesh. That, that was awesome, but at the same time, it's like, come on, really? I mean, he... Uh, you know what, I... Can we have a moment of silence for this guy? Can we get a moment of silence for this poor son of a bitch? Can we all just bow our heads? No, seriously, put down your soda. You put your fucking top on. And can we just have a dignified moment of silence here for Sternritter N, Robert Akutron, okay? <sighs> okay. So next we have the... Hmm... Really, dude? Is that your costume? What? 
Amurahara from Bleach. I thought you'd like it. Yeah, but you dress like that all the time. Like, okay, okay, you know what? Actually, I have good advantage. I can use my V powers for you. I imagine that Law Teching now has all the abilities of Tragofagor Law from One Piece with the Oppie Oppie Nomi and all that shit. What are you going to... Oh, that kind of stung. Oh. <clears throat> Boom! Now maybe you could be useful in this organization. Yeah, or I could just use it to kill you and take your place. Or maybe I can imagine you're in the ninth circle of hell. Ah, oh, touche, touche. Well, it seems we're at an impasse then. Okay then, just, just chill, buddy. Robbie gets completely nuked by the ash wall, and so his body crumbles to dust, I guess, and then his power gets sent up to Yuha. Now remember, when this happened before, the Quincy's didn't automatically die. When Masaki got hit by it, she didn't disintegrate. She didn't get turned into a skeleton. She just had her power stolen. It was just the fact that she was in the middle of a battle with Grand Fisher. That's what killed her. Uh, then again, Stern Raiders with weaker constitutions, like with uh, Katagiri, uh, Uryu's mother, got killed by it because she couldn't handle it. I think maybe Robbie's the same thing. Like, he's a really old guy, so he can't handle handle the deal with the Ashwalan. Meanwhile, Liloto and Gazelle that are young, okay, I was going to say young women, but with Gazelle, okay, young people were able to dodge the light, and even though Liloto notes that her powers are being drained without the light directly touching them, they're still probably going to survive this ordeal. So then we cut to a couple other scenes around the Sayrete. We see na 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 Batman, powers getting stolen as well, and then one of the biggest middle fingers to the audience, Basby. Mother... Basby, really? You're doing this. This is how you're ending Basby. Like, okay, I understand, like, what a lot of people are thinking, like, the powers are going to go to Yuha, and then Yuha is going to showcase the powers that we didn't get to see, like, na na nas, and with uh, Robbie's, for example. But Basby, I mean, like, every fight he's been in, I mean, I, I'm not saying that Kubo's making him out to be one of the strongest Stern Raiders, but he's certainly setting him up to be, like, a main character. You know, he took out freaking Izuru, he nuked freaking Toshiro. He would have killed Toshiro if it wasn't for Kangdu interfering. He, he took out Shinji, or at least he was able to, you know, dis Shinji. And uh, now he was like, okay, Renji and, and Rukia versus Basby, that seems like a cool fight because... You know, nobody was able to give this guy a run for his money up until now. And he is like the only fight that we just pretty much skip. You know, we get to see Renji and him have a little back and forth. Burner finger four, massive explosion. We just get nothing after that. I mean, come on, give us a chapter. I mean, we might have gotten a flashback or something in the future of the fight, but I highly freaking doubt it. Highly freaking doubt it. And like I said, Basby might not really be dead, but his powers are going to be gone. So that's the same thing, basically, as him being dead, because he's not going to be able to show off all the things he can do. Oh, man, that's a main sheet right there. That's that's a main freaking sheet right there. End out the chapter. Loloto then, after witnessing all this chaos around her, looks up to the heavens and states, What were we to you, your majesty? And then we cut back to the soul palace where I guess you all heard her or maybe sensed her through her powers or whatever and just said, You are my comrades. We are comrades. And we help each other out. Now, revive. Go forth. And now, Squad Zero, shall we get started? And then we have Nehemiah, just like wide-eyed glare, like holy shit. We have Lily Barrow and uh, Harold Valkyrie arising from the behind them. Their bolt standing's being activated. Their wings actually look a little more elaborate. You know, all the other Sturmrider's wings look kind of like a little bit like like digital and like rigid. These ones actually look like actual angel wings. And Askin looks like he's getting up too, but we don't get to see if he's in bolt standing. He might be though. So, yeah, that's how we end out the chapter. And like I said, you know, really good one. Really good chapter, all things considered. Just for the fact we finally got to see, you know, what, you know, Colonel Sanders' name was and the fact that we understand what Yuha wants to do with his powers. I mean, we knew this was coming. We knew he was going to use, he was going to absorb the powers back into him at some point, but we just assumed it would be after they die. You know, he could do this whenever he fucking wants. So, you know, I don't know if this is going to be like he's going to show off all the powers that we didn't get to see next chapter. I hope we get to see them. You know, not, not just Nananas and Robbies, but also like the ones that were introduced a long time ago, like Jerome Geisbat and Bernice Gabriele, the ones we didn't get to see at all, aside from like a flashback scene. So, I, I, and Shaz, of course. So, um, you know, I, I I like the chapter. I really did. I, I, don't, I don't see any major problems with it, honestly. And, um, yeah, at the end of the day, I think this is just like, like, last couple chapters have been major cock teases, haven't they been? Like, chapter 501 ended with Nehemiah being like, okay, time to put on, Yuha. And then 602, Askin shows up. And then after the Askin fight, he's like, okay, now, Yuha, you're bringing it on. And now this chapter was just Yuha gathering steam. And now Yuha is like, now we're going to bring it on. 
So, I don't know. If, if next chapter we get to see some bullshit with, like, Ichigo or whatever, I swear. Oh, that's another thing. What the hell are the Hueco Mundo army and the Fullbringers are gonna do? There's, like, nobody left to fight. You know, is Grim Chow and Nell just gonna show up on the scene and be like, Okay, training's done, we're ready to kick some ass, you Quincy motherfucker. What? Where the hell is everybody? I don't know. I, come on, I trained for, like, I haven't been in this series for how many years and now no one's here left to fight? I don't know, man. I mean... Wanna go to the beach? I don't know. Okay, fine. But anyway, yeah, happy Halloween. Thanks you guys for watching. Techie 101 hanging out. Why is there a bright light of Oh shit, asshole! <laughs> Oh god, that was the most painful experience in my life. Hi, right, wait, hold on. No, actually, second most painful. That that zombie Rukia thing was really messed up too. Ah, uh, should probably go to the hospital now. Oh, oh, okay. I wrote him. At least I know you're okay. Uh, uh, oh.